in the, and I'm gonna say this word, delicate Porsche 993 generation Carrera 4. Now I say delicate, not in its build quality, but in its approach to life. Generally, the way this thing goes down a road, the way this thing feels small, that is a really important word in the context of the 993. I think we almost forget today just how much 911s as a platform have grown. If you look at the footprint of a 992 GT3 on the road, they are full fat wide body cars. Even the non-turbo cars are still as wide as the turbo cars and they're, they're actually quite a big platform. The beauty of this, as I waft my way down, and the word here is effortlessly down our tight, twisty British back roads, I think it is wonderful to experience something that is just that little bit smaller. Now we are being tracked in front by the new BMW M3 Touring and it keeps having to break in locations where I barely have to breathe in. I'm just wafting along, scooping in and out of little cracks and crevices that open up in the road, which are apparent to me being this size, but certainly not apparent to more contemporary cars like a new GT3 or even the M3 Touring. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking as a result that it would be that little bit lighter. It's actually not as light as you might think. This thing is almost 1,500 kilograms. Now, that is in part because it is the 4S, which means it's four-wheel drive, so it's got a bit more going on in the front with a front diff, etc. And generally, all-wheel drive cars typically carry more weight. But with a platform of this size, you would think that it would be lighter than it is. Not only this size, this age. And why I say that is cars of this age, and this particular car is a 1995 car, they were never subject to the rules and regulations of more contemporary cars these days. What I mean by rules and regulations is you have to have X amount of airbags and well your A column can't resemble that of a matchstick because it has to have some sort of structural integrity which is why you would be forgiven for thinking that this car would be quite light but before we took it to where it's going we thought it would be the honorable thing to introduce it in its current form and just share what the 993 generation is all about. And the significance of it is that it transpired to be the very last of the air-cooled generation of Porsche. After this, it went to the 996, which uh, became liquid-cooled. So this is somewhat of a last generation, purest Porsche car. Engine way out back. Importantly, the six-speed manual gearbox. Some of these cars were spec'd as a Tiptronic, which Tiptronics in the 90s might as well have been flint from the Stone Age. They were certainly not the desirable version of this car by any means. The fact that it's a Carrera 2 or 4S doesn't really matter in the context of where this thing is ultimately ending up. But as a 4S, this is one of those cars that really underpinned the daily driver sports car. It's built towards the legacy of 911s just being something that you can use every day. And of course, the addition of all-wheel drive means even in adverse weather conditions, you're still bringing out your 911 for your daily drive. And of course, the signature classic engine characteristic of a 911 from the 90s, all of the power is up top. Up until about 4,000 RPM, it's okay. After that, it really starts to come alive. It's a revier engine. It doesn't rev anything, of course, like a GT3, but as a base platform, it revs quite freely and all of the power is generated mid to top end. Now, I've got to touch on the build quality of this car. It is a 1995 car. It's been well used. It's over 70,000 miles. I can honestly say there isn't a squeak or a rattle or a murmur. It's just getting on with being a Porsche. And it's not until you spend time in a car of this generation. When I look at the Ferrari 355, which we're also really fortunate to have in the garage, and this car, they are literally the same year and they were on the front cover of car magazines at the same time and they'd have been head-to-head-ish perhaps not with a Carrera 4 but the point of all of this is 
the 355 is temperamental. This, not a squeak, not a murmur, not a hiccup. It's just getting on with being a Porsche. And when you drive something of this age, you really understand where, thankfully, the stereotype of being a reliable car comes from. Now let's just talk about the way that it goes down a road. Once again, despite the fact that it's not actually that light and it doesn't have that much power, once it's up to speed, we've been down some cliche, and by cliche, I mean beautiful and great British driving roads. They're bumpy, they're undulating, they're twisty, they're turny, and importantly, they're tight. And this is where the overall package of this car really appeals. And it really demonstrates just how important the size of a car is when it comes to a driving car. But honestly, the way it goes down a road is effortless. It just picks it apart. However, it's not the last word in steering feel, weirdly. This is a organic, hydraulic, old school steering rack, but it's got big old tires on it with pretty soft, deep tire walls, small rims. The brakes are okay. There's quite a lot of travel, but it bites fine and gives you enough confidence that you can grab it by the scruff of its neck. But the thing that I like the most is when it's up to speed, you can thread this thing. It maintains momentum in quite an enjoyable way. Audibly, it's not particularly exciting. Now, this is a stock car from the 90s, engineered much more as a daily driver. There is still that undertones of the iconic Porsche flat six sound, but it's just not that exciting. However, we'll be taking care of that soon. That being said, there's something about it. It definitely feels like a sports car, but unlike something like a GT3, it's very road biased, right? There's not a single ounce of track suggestion in this car's DNA, despite the fact that it has come from the Porsche brand. But as a platform, the multi-link rear suspension is also one of the things which set this car apart, particularly from the 964 as a platform. This had the ability to be adjusted, set up to its sporting needs, and it completely separated it apart from the likes of the 964, and importantly, makes it a fantastic platform for evolving. And then there's the intangible things, the things you can't really Google or put a finger on, which is the way that it makes you feel just driving around at casual speeds, nothing to do with dynamics or anything like that. It just makes you feel so cool. <laughs> There's something about it. I can't quite put my finger on it. There's a retro feel inside. I think as well, there's this sort of sidewalk vibe. It's a technical term that I've dreamt up where you get an impression, this almost invisible feedback from people around you in other cars and on the pavement as to their reaction to this car on the road. And the general pulse is positive. There is an appreciation when people see it, they tend to smile. It's small, it's got a friendly face. A minute ago I parked this next to a Volkswagen Polo and this looked distinctively smaller in footprint to a contemporary Volkswagen Polo, which gives you a spot of context as to the size and, well, lack of presence of this thing on a road. But that's its appeal, right? That is its appeal of how you can thread this thing down a great road. You step out of it. I would classify this now where it sits as a sort of beautiful pub car. It's a great thing to get into on a sunny day such as this. Drive it to your favorite restaurant, park it outside, have a croissant and admire the beautiful lines of, interestingly, a Mr. Tony Hatter, who was a British designer, you heard that right, that designed the German Porsche 993. So what's actually been really enjoyable is spending some time in this car. We've had it for a few weeks. I've used it quite a lot. And I think it's important considering the journey it's about to go on, and that video is about to follow soon as to just how extreme we're planning on uh, augmenting this car, is to understand why it's important. Its quirks, its original characteristics, what makes it a 993, and to live with it, there is an inherent sense of cool being in it. I really enjoy that. I mean, really, as you drive this thing, it is, in the literal sense, a classic 911 in that you can feel this being part of the foundation of why the 911 is acknowledged as probably the best daily driver sports car. 
you can feel where it's evolved from, where it's evolved to. We're really fortunate on the channel to have a, a few Porsches in the garage and being able to look back and feel how those cars are standing on this platform's shoulders is actually a really nice experience. And for once, being able to spend a few weeks with it and understand it and learn it. I mean, you can imagine this car, mid-95, being something actually pretty serious. These seats, however, you can really appreciate why this was positioned much more of a daily driver sports car because lateral support, well, there's not much. They look authentic and they feel authentic too. It's a little bit like a old Chesterfield. It's slidey with not a great deal of support. <laughs> now you don't really sling this thing around, mostly because it's a little bit old, but you don't sling this thing around in the same way that you might do a GT3 to really start to feel the old school 911 physics. Now when you throw it through a, a tight corner and you have any mid-corner throttle lift, you are reminded that it is very much a, a rear engine car. And what I mean by that is the engine is literally behind the rear axle, giving it that sort of pendulum-like physics. But because you don't drive it that hard, it's much more of a cruiser, you never really get into the realms of upsetting it unless you really want to. You can really open it up. That wor that's where it starts to sing above 4,000, and you can appreciate it. You know, it's not a great sounding car yet, but it's just the way that it maintains the momentum. It's so supple because new cars are generally bigger and heavier. Somewhere along the line, they've got to keep that mass in check. And oftentimes it comes through the suspension. But in this, the way it floats, the sidewall, of course, as well of these big tires help absorb a lot of the road. And before you know it, as a result, you're ironing out cracks and creases. I mean, I'm really familiar with this road. We film a lot down here, and I'm very familiar with the tough spots, the annoying spots, the, the cracks, crevices, the dynamic trials and tribulations that are thrown by a lot of cars. And some of the areas which I'm more familiar with, I questioned earlier, have I gone past those sections yet? Because this thing just sort of irons it out. It's a funny experience. On the one hand, it rides really well, but there's definitely a compromise in overall dynamics. But there's something about the way it cruises. It doesn't encourage you to drive it fast, weirdly, which is not the case with new 911s. But really, I want to make the most of situations like this. One arm on the sill, one arm on the gear stick, changing gears for no reason at all at, and this is the bit that I'm gonna make the most of for a short amount of time, road sensible speeds. Just being able to enjoy it for what it was originally intended. Great all round cruiser, timeless looks, wonderful character. It's even retained that original smell. Whatever they used to build cars from back in the day, the hides, the plastics, whatever it was, it's got that old school smell carpet on the door cards, for example. That's very much a nod to the 90s. And then we have the dials. Now the dials in front of me, so cliche, but they're so iconic, they're so classic. It's really cool. I feel very lucky to be sat in front of such authentic dials, which are now so iconic. I know it's a simple thing, it's a small thing, but you know, growing up a fan of cars and reading about Porsches for decades and all of my favorite car mags, to see this in front of me is just a wonderful thing. The only thing which hasn't been retained by the previous owner was the original head unit, probably because it wasn't that great, but that would have been quite cool if not just for nostalgia's sake. But soon, all of that will be gone, and this is going to be transformed into something so unbelievably beautiful and so unbelievably special. I cannot wait to take you on the journey for it. It's going to be one of our most exciting project cars yet. And that leads me on to the next video on the 993, which if there was ever a time to subscribe, to be alerted when that content goes live, now is it.